What's up everyone, it's your boy NornRad89 here bringing another ranking video today. I finally got a chance to see Mank, so I've seen all of David Fincher's films now for his feature films that he's directed. We're going to stop and rank all of them. This is just my list, my personal opinion. I would love to hear from all of you in the comments section down below. So let's get on to this ranking. Roll it. So we have 11 David Fincher films to get through, ranking them all from worst to best. So let's kick this off with number 11. And his worst one really isn't like that bad of a film. Like this movie, I would probably give like a 6 or a 7 out of 10. So it's not a horrible movie. It's just the bottom of the list for his. So David Fincher, number 11 for me is going to be The Curious Case of Benjamin Button starring Brad Pitt and Kate Blanchett. This is definitely one that the graphics and the de-aging effects were definitely ahead of its time for sure. Probably a, lo a lot of the stuff that they ended up using on like Star Wars and everything. This was one of those movies that kind of did it first way back in the day and everything. It's a great story. It has like kind of like a, a Forrest Gump type story feel to it, where it, you follow this man as he basically is born backwards. He, you know, and he as he ages, he gets younger. It's just it's kind of wild. It's a really good, interesting film, but for me, it just doesn't have a lot of rewatch value. It's one of those films that hits hard once, and then after that, it's not like one that keeps me dragging back and everything. So that's why it's sitting here at number eleven. Number 10 is going to be Alien 3, and this is definitely one that a lot of people have big problems with because of that first, like, five, six minutes of the film where they kind of retcon the end of Aliens, but I still do like this film. I've returned to it quite often, like I've shown my friends when I first introduced some of my friends to the Alien series, and, like, Alien 3 is just one that I've, I've rewatched a lot, and I do like it. It's not my favorite Alien movie, but it's still one that I don't hate or anything like that, so that's why Alien 3 is sitting here at this number 10 spot. Number 9 is going to be Gone Girl starring Ben Affleck and Rosamund Pike. This was definitely a movie that really I didn't think I would be that interested in and I thought it was kind of overhyped and everything but once I found out David Fincher was the director his unique style and the way he brings stories to life it was just that much better like it really does hit hard it's got a pretty good crazy twist that happens like kind of midway point through the movie and like it's pretty interesting like for a movie to do that because you're used to the twist happening in like the last third act, the last 10, 15 minutes. But this movie kind of flips that on its head and does a whole different idea for you. And I think Ben Affleck, this was the movie where I saw it and I was like, oh, he's, he's back. He can really still do his acting skills and everything because I think he was he was kind of gone for a while, disappeared, didn't really do a lot of films. And then this one came out and I was like, damn, he's back. So Gone Girl, number nine. Number eight is going to be Panic Room, starring Jodie Foster, Forrest Whitaker, Jared Leto's in this film too. And this is one of those films that proves to you what a really skilled artistic director can do with such a basic script. Because this is like a basic B-movie type, you know, home invasion story of guys breaking into the house. The mom and daughter lock themselves up in an impenetrable room. But of course, the guys, everything they want or what they want is in that room. So, you know, it's got a really good, simple B-movie type story. But Fincher just elevates it so much with his directing style and the way and the things that he's able to do and create tension in certain moments. It's a really great film, and I do enjoy Panic Room. Number seven is going to be The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, starring Rooney Mara and Daniel Craig. This is a movie that has probably one of the greatest intro scenes ever in film history, and it's just such a dark and heavy content movie, but it still keeps you interested. Like, there are some deep talking scenes in this movie. There are long stretches of just, like, tension and everything, but the way that David Fincher, of course, elevates the story like he always does is just so great and keeps you interested and wanting to know more about these people. It's also based off a book series, and there's uh, three original movies from uh, made out of state, out of the States, but... This one, I really wish, the reason it's this low on the list is I really wish David Fincher got a chance to tackle the girl who plays with fire and the girl who kicked the hornet's nest. Like, those two were never going to get to see from Fincher and see him carry on this story. So that's why Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, it kind of hurts for me because every time I watch it, I just want to see Fincher do the other ones. And I'm like, we're never going to get those. So it really does kind of suck. But Girl with the Dragon Tattoo is still an A-class movie for sure. 
Number six is going to be The Game, a 1997 thriller starring Michael Douglas and Sean Penn. This is definitely a really interesting movie. This was another one, kind of like Gone Girl for me, where when I was younger, I watched this, and it was, I didn't think this was going to be a movie I was into at all. I was like, this is just going to be some kind of uh, thriller. I'm going to forget it about it years after this, but Michael Douglas and Sean Penn really just, oh, this movie elevated thriller for me it was one of the first movies that i watched where the content was actually a little deeper and more like twist style and you had to pay attention and it was a movie that really got me in to liking other thrillers and letting me experience other movies and everything so that's why i really like the game even though i still know the twist and what happens at the end of the movie i still to this day can watch this film and really enjoy it or show someone who hasn't seen it i love watching it with someone for the first time and just seeing their face or seeing them want to ask those questions like what's going to happen next do you know what's going to happen next tell me come on tell me like you know that kind of thing happens when you watch this movie and i do like the game just barely made it not into the top five but number six definitely a great enjoyable movie i recommend checking it out if you haven't seen it so now we are here at the top five and before we get to the top five consider dropping a like and hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay up to date on all the content i put out so let's kick it off with number five and that's going to be the social network this was definitely a crazy interesting movie that i think a lot of people didn't believe was going to be big but of course david fincher and aaron sorkin just brought together the script and perfect direction in filming and we got an amazing movie with some great actors in it as well andrew garfield really brought it home in this movie for sure and just jesse eisenberg and justin timberlake all the other people in this movie they really dived deep into these roles and you can really feel it for sure add to that you got trent reznor doing the soundtrack for this movie oh it's just a movie that has all this quick wit, good dialogue, and it flies right off the page, and you just love watching it because these characters are so engaging. Even if Jesse Eisenberg's character isn't that likable as Mike Zuckerberg, but it's still a powerful film that was unique in its time and had a message to say at the time when it came out, and I still think to this day is a great film. So Social Network sitting at number five. So here we at number four, and this is the most recent Fincher film that I saw, and it's Mank. Mank is an amazing film about a 1930s, 1940s uh, Herman J. Mankiewicz, the writer of Citizen Kane, and it's definitely a great period piece. Filmed in black and white, has such good aesthetics and just a theme and a vibe to it that I loved it, and it just ticked me into that world, into that time period, and I was down for the ride, and like I said, I loved it. Once I saw it, as it just kept going on and on, I was like, this movie is elevating itself in the list of Fincher films for me, and like climbed all the way to number four. I thought it was going to be in the top three, but after I revisited some of the other Fincher films, this one sits comfortable here at my number four spot. So now we're here at the top three, and number three is going to be Seven. This is a movie that is probably one of the darkest thrillers, deepest content that I've ever seen, and some of the best character acting you're going to get from two people like Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt. They really bring it in this movie. Kevin Spacey is as amazing as the antagonist in this film. It's just one of those movies that is so quotable. It's very unforgettable. Like you, could, I've known people who've only seen this movie once, and they still remember a lot of the stuff that happens in this movie. That's because it really leaves an imprint and a mark on you. And it's still a great film. It's got such good dialogue, 10 scenes. And David Fincher just has such a way of elevating films like this. Like they're realistic in such a fashion that you feel like you're watching real detectives trying to solve these murders. And this case, it doesn't feel like a film. It feels real life, down, dirty, and gritty. And that's why I like it. Fincher really brought it home in this one. And like I said, with a great cast like that, that just submerged themselves into these roles. It was a film that a lot of people are never going to forget. It has one of the most quotable endings, craziest endings I've ever seen in a film. There's a lot of people's number one or number two, but it's sitting here at my number three spot, seven. So how we're here at number two, and this is the runner-up to the top dog, and my runner-up is going to be Fight Club, starring Edward Norton and Brad Pitt. This was a movie that, when it came out, was so unique, so influential, and Fincher really just put a lot of his ideas on the screen and into the script and like the way it came out 
this is a movie that I can never see with a different director or a different cast, and I, ca I can't picture it in my mind working. Fincher really is the perfect director for Fight Club, the type of film that it was. Edward Norton and Brad Pitt just do amazing in their roles, bringing you into this kind of crazy world of Tyler Durden and underground fighting and just men who are at a time in their lives where they're angsty they want to rebel and they just don't like the system they feel like they're mistreated it's just it's a really great film with some awesome scenery the dialogue is so unforgettable and Helena Baum Carter in it she is amazing as well like it's just got a very unique cast and the idea and concept for this film is one that I've rarely seen like executed this perfectly like David Fincher really went all out on Fight Club and like I said, the execution of it just came out to this perfection that we saw on screen and people to this day still love it. It doesn't hold up as much for some people because it is kind of a, a time period movie where it was big at its time and it had really something to say. And now you just kind of have to have that nostalgic love for it and everything. But Fight Club is still a great A movie for sure sitting here at number two. But now here we are at the number one spot. My top dog, my favorite Fincher film of all time is Zodiac. This is a very deep, influential film that I love. I read the book for this film before this movie even. It's based off a book by Robert Gray Smith. And before it even came out, I knew what it was about. I knew the book. And once I found out that Fincher was attached to this project, I was so on board. And when you go see this, Zodiac is probably... This is a hard 10 out of 10 for me. This is probably one of the best movies in building tension and just slowly taking its time and deliberately going at the slow pace. But the payoff at the end and the moments that it have that are so tense, it really makes your hair stand on end. And it's just such a creepy movie. Jake Gyllenhaal, Mark Ruffalo, Robert Downey Jr. This is an amazing cast of people who brought to life a really good true story. That was, again, just elevated by Fincher's directing style and the way he decided to do a lot of the stuff for this film. And I'm not too, too positive on how, like, how much of it is 100% true, but I know a lot of it is based off Robert Gray Smith's book, and his book is pretty spot-on close because, like I said, he was the guy living in that time period during this thing. And, like, to see this stuff and experience the Zodiac again, this is a movie that really, like, kind of like Mank. It takes you back to that time period, really makes you feel that unease and that tension that people had all over the country because we had no idea who this killer was and he was just going around picking off people, seemed so random and he was taunting the cops. This is, like I said, a grade A top 10 out of 10 for me. I love Zodiac. Definitely sitting here comfortable at the number one spot. I hope you guys enjoyed the ranking today of all my David Fincher films that are the David Fincher films that are currently out. This is just my list. I, again, I would love to hear from all of you. Share your list. We can have awesome debates in the comment section, everything. Have a safe and happy day, guys. Peace out.